Tonight, this is probably my introduction, but you guys know who I am, so uh, I'm going to skip that. Um, the class is on realistic uh, full painting for haunting, so we'll cover a number of different painting methods. Um, dry brushing, does everybody know what dry brushing is? You guys are probably going to know most of this anyway. <laughs> but uh, dry brushing is just a method of uh, having very little paint on your brush. And we'll go to all these in detail. Um, using water for distressing, that's the big secret for distressing water. Uh, sponging without a sponge. I don't like sponging, if you know what that is. See? Take sponges, put paint on it, and, and the problem with that is it always looks like sponging, and it always creates patterns. <coughs> twist the sponge. So uh, we got better methods than that. Uh, stenciling. I'll show you stenciling for things like wallpaper. Uh, crackling effect, uh, where the paint splits. And a monster mud uh, method for walls. Um, and we use that to avoid foam when we can, using foam. Not that I'm against foam, it's just um, sometimes it's not very practical. Um, not only uh, is it a fire hazard, it is a fire hazard. You can, you can try to put fire retardant in your paint and whatnot, but unfortunately with any sort of heat, foam melts and it's toxic. And I don't care what anybody says, if you've ever cut foam with hot tools, it's toxic. Um, so we try to avoid it when we can. All right, uh, a few quick tips um, to get uh, any sort of realistic um, effect. You always want to use uh, at least three different colors. Um, one or two colors makes it look flat, makes it look phony. The more colors, the better. Um, don't be afraid to exper experiment. Uh, we've run into a lot of different methods that we wouldn't have thought of. Uh, we discovered things by accident. So don't be afraid to experiment and you can always paint over your mistakes. It's just paint. You're not gonna ruin your, your walls. Um, also, study colors from real life. Uh, we've taken trips to Disney and we get home and my wife goes through the pictures and there's pictures of rocks and walls. And and it drives our nuts, but. <laughs> All right, so we'll start with dry brushing because that's easy. And I don't have any light paint already, see that? All right, I will be back. Yeah. No, this will no, make up for the intro. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Oh, there you go. Into the high end Victor right You might have seen me. Victor, I'm from a smash hit, American Sky. I'm Troy McClure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> such movies as. Was, was that your word? No, it's mine. It was shitless <laughs> self promotion. You know, people are like, you don't promote yourself enough. So, I'm going to start. All right. There are haunters out there that haven't seen American Scream, which. I just cannot fathom it. <laughs> but I, I ran into a bunch of them at Hong Kong. Yeah. It's like, really? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Right. I want to get as much paint off the brush as you can. All right. So this is for bringing out the the high spots in any of your props or walls and this way your prop still has a lot of depth to it so you guys know this already I should just skip this but so you guys get the idea just remove as much paint from your brush as you can before you brush it off um, another thing my brushing is good for is uh, water streaking for your tombstones 
coffins and, and graveyard, cemetery walls, and mausoleum walls, that sort of thing. You just got to remember water always drips down. So there are other, method, other methods to getting water stains, but when you use the dry brushing, it makes it look really old, like it's been there for a long, long time. We'll cover some of the other methods, but it'll look a bit newer. I know typically you do, you dry brush a lighter paint over a darker paint. Have you ever run into this instances where you go the other way? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, I'll show you. <clears throat> Like I was mentioning about the different colors, you'll get different kind of stains. You look at a graveyard over there, you'll see that these are a lot of different colors on our gray walls. Yes, no? Okay. And what else do we have here for dry brushing? Oh, age. If you want to age something like woodworking, you take a look at that porch over there. I will have a picture of that porch. You don't have to just hit the, the high spots. wood painted gray. That looks so, and unlike the water staining, if it's a wood grain, just go with the grain because this can be baseboard or anything. You don't have to um, streak it up and down. Just go with the grain. Can you see that? So dry brushing for hitting high spots and props, for creating water stains, and for creating age and wood. All right, now we're going to distress with water. That's the big secret of really distressing is water. Uh, we're going to start with modeling. Now, modeling is good for uh, also creating, um, it's good for creating granite uh, or, or just um, old patchy walls. Not necessarily water stain, but it could be water stain too. Um, so, I'll start with the lights and set Dark.
All right, basically you're re-wetting the paint and you want to get your uh, brush marks out of the paint. You looking for the other uh, sprayer? Yeah. I don't. I don't think it's in there. I think it's up back somewhere. Oh, okay. Um, Kathy was using it, so it's either in the bathroom or the graveyard. Okay. It's not something you hear every day. <laughs> colors go over an old color I like to use earthy colors right. you can use a rag too you don't have to use a brush for this rag tends to take more off so you're going to have to put more paint on. It'll blend a lot. You can see we got a almost a marble effect on this. Okay, I'm, I'm pushing down on the rag now. The difference between this and just letting it run, which we'll do in a minute, is that it looks old. Um, is this water or something else? No! <laughs> Come on, go big or go home. No, <laughs> <laughs> no there's a little, a, another little spray bottle. The problem with this one is the nozzle is broken. Okay. <laughs> this is just the first thing I ran across, so. <laughs> just blow up the noise. Has to fit in the suitcase. <laughs> it has to fit in the suitcase, is that? All right, so that's, uh, that's a good uh, old mausoleum or sewer system look. And uh, we do this on uh, our painted walls too inside of the mansion or the manor. Make it look old, throw some brown in there. Always experiment with the colors, don't be afraid. Yay! It's the good one. down. Now if you do want a horny look, you have to start with some water on the wall. better for um, newer looking uh, distressing like if your mansion or manor just lost lost its roof uh, you're going to see a lot of water damage it's good for bathrooms and sewers and labs and that sort of thing too all right so we had modeling um, the slow age look um, with a brush or a rag and the quick runny look. Now, um, some haunters also just, uh, they have really good bottles. I have really cheap uh, spray bottles, but they actually mix a little bit of paint into the water and then they just spray it and they let it run. Um, and uh, I'm not going to demonstrate it, but you can also um, distress clothes uh, in the same way. Um, if you 
put the paint in the water. Um, I usually have a couple cups with different colors, and it's it's great for distressing clothes. Um, you can use tea and stuff, uh, but the paint you get the colors you want. All right, uh, we're gonna do sponging without a sponge. Like I said, my problem with sponging is you get a pattern. There's no way around it. Um, so there's a few things you can do. There's washcloth painting. washcloth without a pattern on it. Some of them are threaded, especially like kids' wasp washcloths. They're threaded and they can leave a pattern. So just like a sponge, you have to wet the sponge first before you paint with it. I should just have a cup so I can get this in. It doesn't matter if they're dark, light. You're gonna mix and match a lot of these things. White too. Cloth. And you can see you don't get a spongy look, you get a totally random look. Like different stone, different color. Put a little bit of paint on there, not a ton, but it's not like dry brushing where you don't want any. So you still get a texture without the pad. some white and then when I do color combinations Yeah, I like this brown. It, uh, you know, there's there's metal in some stone, so it gives it a good, uh, almost rusted look. So the it. first two you did have a really good granite look. Yeah, white and black. absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> you can't get that with sponge. This is actually use a red, and you got a good brick as well. Get the idea. Different stone looks. Same washcloth. 
Now I usually do four or five different colors. If you look at the pillars again, I need to take pictures. But if you look at the pillars that I have in the in the uh, graveyard, not not those big ones. There's some smaller ones in the back. Uh, I'll show them to you later. Um, but really, I, all the stones they have. They, they, it looks like there's five or six different kind of stone, kind of granite. sponges it takes a long time you know you gotta sit there with the sponge and you gotta do this and do that and it's and you're trying to break the pattern ooh this is sticky inside that's scary <laughs> <laughs> where's that sponge been <laughs> <laughs> right. so I use sir. this um when we do our wallpaper, um, before we do any stenciling, I like to have the walls um, two or three colors. Um, if you look at actual old-fashioned wallpaper, there, there are multiple colors, and it, it'll break it up. If you do one color, and I do have some of that in the haunt, if you do one color, and I put a stencil over it, it makes it look stenciled. When we did our... Um, it was the old wallpaper was fabric, right? So it probably had different exactly, colors. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <coughs> there's a huge advantage to this in speed, too, that you... I need to water this down a little bit. This paint's kind of thick. All right. See what that is? Wow. Now, when we do our wallpaper, um, I like to do uh, a dark color as a base and a color that's close to it. So, if I do a brown, I'll do a uh, tan, and then sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll do some other uh, colors. I might use a, a gold real quick or uh, a dark green or something. But you can't detect a pattern with this, and it's way faster than sponges. And if you have two of them, it takes no time. Boom, 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 boom. So normally, like I said, the colors are closer, and that's me. It's good for it's good for anything. It's good for stone. It's good for wallpaper. I really have to soak this. That's just a car wash mitt, basically, right? That's a, yeah. That's that's exactly what it is. Um, you used to find them in the paint department at Walmart, but they don't. Uh, for some reason, they don't sell them anymore. So, yeah, you can get them at the cart uh, in the, uh, yeah, it's for waxing and stuff, but you can get them at the uh, Home Depot paint department, too. So I'll be able to clean that later. All right, now we're going to get into stenciling. What I'll do is when I do the actual class, I'll have some background ready to go with wallpaper colors that I like to use. All right. All right, you can use store-bought stencils. You can go to Michael's and buy stencils and uh, 
me get a couple examples. You can buy stencils right at the store. They, they've got some pretty cool Victorian prints and whatnot. Right. That's custom. Those are custom. There's stock. This is store bought. And this is store bought. You can get them pretty big. So this pattern's pretty cool because it overlaps. There's Tiny registration marks right here. Tiny triangles. So once you do your, your, your stencil, you move it over, line up the triangles to the ones that you just painted, if you don't forget to paint the triangles, which has happened. Um, you get a really good effect, and that's what we did in the foyer, so I'll have pictures for that. <laughs> and you can get different kind of patterns, too. Um, uh, we keep everything lined up if there's a stencil without uh, without registration marks is uh, we use a chalk line and we just put it down the wall snap it and then we have a line to follow and we just measure out the chalk lines You can do custom stencils. Uh, you can buy the stenciling material. It comes packaged. I don't recall how much it is, but it's really not that much money. This is these are the biggest ones I could find though. Okay. I use a wood burning pen. What I suggest is you, you can find patterns online or you can create your own. So what I like to do is tape this to your pattern and then uh, follow the pattern with a marker um, because you're not going to be able to burn it because you're going to burn the paper. <laughs> so uh, follow your pattern with a marker and once that's done you'll have your pattern on here and you can burn it. And I'm going to show you burning, but I'm not going to do this at the class um, because uh, one of my stencils are shot, so I'll show you guys how to burn them. Alright, so let me demo. Dry enough. So my front, yes. So this is a custom stencil that we made. Um, it's actually, even though uh, they don't overlap, they don't touch each other. Um, it's a two-color stencil. So we did make registration marks. So uh, we made little holes here, and these little holes are in both stencils. So after we do the first color, we go to do the second color, we can uh, line up the stencil. Um, another thing uh, that we did when we do our custom stencils is uh, I make sure there's a, a line that we can follow. There's a bunch of points right in the center of the stencil, so I can follow it right down the chalk line. And another thing that we do is once I do a stencil, we'll move it down, and how, whatever space I want between stencils, will be the space from <coughs> the top of the stencil to the top of the, the plastic. Um, and this the way there's no measuring, there's no thinking about it. You do one, you move it down, put the top of the, top of the plastic against the bottom of your, your print, and do it again. So now I found these cool foam rollers. Now there's, there's various ways uh, you can do this. You can get stenciling brushes. They're round brushes and they're flat on the bottom. 
take a tremendous amount of time to do. It takes forever. With this, um, I've also tried the, the, I don't know what you call it, I guess wool type brushes. These things soak up paint and they don't want to let the paint go. And you'll know that when you're starting to run out of paint and you think you got no more, but you go to clean your roller and it takes you half an hour because there's a shitload of paint in there. So it's kind of a waste. Um, I'm going to use, I'm going to use the white. Not wise there. Let's, let's clip this over. I, I like to use uh, tacks instead of pins. I mean, uh, instead of tape. Because you can't see the pin holes once you pull it off. But you can see the ground hole on an outlet? What was that? You can see the ground hole on an outlet. Yes, you can see the ground hole on an outlet. Very different. foam rollers. These things are awesome. The paint tends to to stay at the top and not sink in too much. Um, it also releases the paint and they're easy to clean. And the other thing is um, you get a sharper edge with these than you do with the, the foam. Where do you find those rollers? Walmart. You can find them anywhere yeah. but they're cheap at Walmart. Like uh, This was less than two bucks. It comes with the handle, the a uh, foam roller, the wool roller, and the tray cool. for less than two bucks, so can't beat it. Not that I'm a proponent of Walmart, but <laughs> there's no Home Depot in my town. What? This will pick up little detail if you don't normally get the other rollers. That's another thing. When you're stenciling, you don't want to stand around talking. You want to get as much done because the more detailed lines, the more finer lines in your hair, the faster they're going to fill in. So you can try to wire brush them clean. I actually use a screwdriver to scrape the paint out of the, out of the detail lines. All right. But you can see, after a while, the paint just doesn't come off. And for some reason, it depends on the color. This is the same brand paint. The lighter color washes off. I just, I just, I don't use soap or anything. I just 
put it in the sink, run it under the water, and it, it comes off with the, the red not so much. All right. I don't know how this is going to work because the paint underneath is still uh, wet, but we'll see. Okay, that's another thing. It doesn't have to line up perfectly. You'd be surprised how off it can be. If you look at my wall sometimes, uh, especially when I have other people do it, sometimes they're pretty, pretty far off. Hey. <laughs> no, I don't mean you. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody's going to notice. For some reason, pins don't work. If I do this on the phone board, it'll be better. So you're actually going to try to do it live during the class then? Yeah. If I don't, this will be a very short class. Okay. Ten minutes. Okay. We're done! <laughs> what do I have for time so far? You're 23 minutes left. That's it? I'm going to get moving. <laughs> All right. See, it's not really sticking too well. But it is what it is for now. You guys will get the idea. I'll make sure I get all my fine lines. Yeah, there it is. Another thing, you get it, try to keep the stencil pretty still and then pull it off because if not, you'll smear it and you don't want to do that. There's a lot of reasons for uh, custom stencils. I couldn't find a Cthulhu stencil. So I <laughs> had to make my own. All right, let me spray this so it doesn't get dried up. There was my other stencil I used. I'm going to spray it. Also, Pam's assisting me at the uh, oh, okay. for the class, so I don't have to do things like this. All righty, so that's stenciling. All right, uh, and I just showed you multicolor stencils. Uh, the other thing is when you're making custom stencils, you've seen the stenciled lettering where in the letters there's lines, and the reason for those lines is so your letters don't fall out of the stencils. You've got to be careful when you're designing your stencil that, um, you know, if you draw in a circle, you're not going to have another little circle in the middle unless you have something to keep it attached to that stencil. So when you design your your patterns will crackle. All right. Here's a good slide. I, a lot of you guys have done this with me already. I'm going to have to use a light color over a dark color. <laughs> All right, if, if you've seen uh, old houses have multiple layers of paint, you know, over the years, they change colors, and then it'll crack, and you'll see the uh, 
either the wood underneath or you'll see another paint color underneath. That's the effect that we're going for here. I can't get the bottle open. Mm -hmm. Squeeze it up. <laughs> go bigger, go home. <laughs> is you're gonna paint a oh god this brush is hard paint some glue on there Harbor Freight, pick up some cheap brushes. All right. You want your base color underneath that paint for the glue before you glue it, right? Yes. So whatever you want your, your cracks to be. In this case, we'll use light over dark. I usually like to go the opposite because I like the, the cracks light. It, it seems to show up better. That's enough. We'll see. And I'm going to use white because I want it to show up. Okay. Paint over it. While it's still wet. While it's still wet. Okay. If you go light, you won't you won't pull the, the glue off. Okay. Now well, we did the whole the front of the house with this effect. Drywall screw. What was that? No drywall screw. Well that's another thing. If you don't get the crack, the cracking that you want, no, that's cracking okay. You can draw your patterns in. We were using a drywall screw to kind of draw our patterns in, and then we, we would put the heat gun on it wherever we, yeah. What happens is the paint expands, the glue doesn't. So this particular one looks like all the lines are going this way, but if I wanted like a square type pattern, I could uh that's the problem with heat that is blistering. And I don't have a hair dryer here. You get the idea, you can see where it's all, it's all cracked now. We did that on the front of the house, because that's the first thing that we worked on, we worked on the facade. When we moved into this building, we found out, you know, our, our, our haunt was designed so it was like rectangular. <coughs> that this building is L-shaped, we had to cut the haunt essentially and tilt half of it. That meant that whole 
wall on the side facing the graveyard was exposed. So the month that we were moving in here, we had to uh, build the siding. The problem is, it took how long to do that crackling? It took a couple weeks to do the crackling. We didn't have a couple weeks. So what we did, and I don't know if this is going to work because this pencil is pretty awful, <laughs> but I'll, I'll show you how to make the stencil. Now, without applying <coughs> heat, it'll still crackle, right? It'll just be slower? No. Really? Because the paint will dry faster. <coughs> you have to apply the heat for the paint to dry faster than the glue. If they dry at the same time, it's not going to split. Now, does that work on foam? No. Okay. Because it'll destroy the foam. Right. The, the heat will destroy the foam. Right. Well, air dryer. Yeah, I'm thinking more along the lines of hair dryer. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess I, I guess it could survive a hair dryer. Mm. Right. Now, the stencil's shot, so it's not going to look great. I'm going to show you how to make the stencil. Crackle. See the difference in time? Yeah. <laughs> so, we did the whole side in, in a day. That whole and, and that side's actually longer than the front, I believe. And uh, you'll notice, well, you can't notice because it's all filled in. But I did this whole thing, and I could just use sections. Unlike regular stenciling, you don't have to line anything up. It's already filled in. You know, you can just move it around, do sections as needed. So it's a quick way to thank you. It's a quick way to do crackle. Not sure. We have oops. Don't right click, never right click. Alright, I showed you the they also sell store bought crackle, um, where you don't need the heat. I guess it's formulated, so you put your first paint on, and when you put your second paint on, the paint that cracks, uh, it does it chemically, it cracks chemically. Now, it looks really good, but it's really, really expensive. Um, it would have cost us more, I think, in crackle paint than wood to do. It's very expensive. It's meant for small antiques and stuff. It's more of a craft thing. Mm -hmm. And we did the quick method with the stencil. All right, let's do some monster run. How much time do I have? Yeah, well, 12 minutes. 12 minutes, okay. All right, does everybody know what monster mud is? No. Mm -hmm. okay, they're all hard so. <laughs> well, for the sake of argument, you know, no, what's monster just mud? just starting out. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> that's, I'm, I'm being the, you know, the beginner one. Yeah, for the sake of argument, what is monster mud? Come on. I have, like, no clue. That's why they're at the cons, so. It's sanitary. <laughs> All right, Monster Mud is joint compound and paint. And basically, it's a five to one ratio, so five parts joint compound, one part paint. So if you get a five gallon bucket of joint compound, you get a one gallon bucket of paint, and you're good. Of course, it doesn't all fit in one bucket, so you have to do it in sections. All right, the reason why we came up with this was we had a lot of stone work to do. Um, foam is expensive. By, uh, if you buy it, generally it only comes in two foot sections because they have to fit between the studs of the walls. Um, you don't generally find four foot, four by eight pieces of foam. Um, they're out there, but they're not cheap. So, pay 12 bucks, 14 bucks for a sheet of OSB. And uh, save some money. The other thing about foam, like I was saying, is it's, it's really not safe. It's not a safe thing to use because it melts. You can't. My fire marshal comes through with a lighter and he tries to light everything on fire. If he actually went up to my flame piece, and tried to light it, it's gonna melt. It doesn't matter what you put on it, it's 
it's going to melt. You can put foam coat on it, it's going to melt on the inside, even if your foam coat um, manages to hold up. And then you're going to be able to stick your finger right through it. Ten minutes. All right, so we use this Monster Mud. Now, uh, this is a piece of OSB, and I've routed the grout lines in my stone. And now, when we originally did this, we um, put a thin coat on. We tried to make our monster mud last. And then I had uh, one of the kids doing some monster mud on the side of a mausoleum. And the kid laid it on thick. And uh, I wasn't happy with them until I tried to pull some off. Oh, excuse me. It was semi-dry. And when I tried to pull some off, because um, some of it was too dry to pull off, I would scrape it across. And now I'm getting these cool kind of patterns in it without the pull. It's very wet, so we're getting a lot of like stringy kind of, of, of pulls in it. But if you, you put your monster mod on, you let it sit for a while, and then you try to pull some off, it makes some great, great stone patterns. Like, those are okay, but I got some on the skull walls that look like real stone. It makes a great texture. And it's not... It doesn't replace foam. You'll never replace foam. The other thing is, it's not quick. Foam is fast. So you've got a, an advantage with foam if you're trying to build and get out of there. All right. One thing you, that you don't want to do is you don't want to do this. You're going to get a bunch of spiking. Looks like stucco. <laughs> yeah, it looks like stucco. You're going to get that stucco effect. You want to smooth it out as much as you can. What I'm going to do for the actual demonstration is I'll have this piece finished and I can pass it around and then I'll be doing that on the other piece. That's why I cut two pieces. That's pretty much it. So I'll basically let it dry a little bit, and before it's completely dry, where you can where you can tap on it, where it doesn't it doesn't pull off on your glove. Then you can take your glove and kind of smooth it out, and you'll get a great rough looking stone effect. The other thing is, uh, it's gonna it's, uh, because there's joint compound in there, it's gonna dry a little lighter than it is here. You don't even have to paint it if you don't want to. You can just leave it. Um, so that's a huge advantage, too. And that's it. So I'll finish this piece off later for the demonstration um, as, a, as a sample. But once that's semi-dry, I'll mess with it a little bit and I'll get the stone pattern, the granite pattern that I, I really want. All right, so what do we got for time? Five minutes. Five minutes? All right, I got a question period here. But what I was thinking of doing is showing you another granite method. All right, so the advantage is uh, it's an alternative for more durable. If you have foam on a wall, somebody's, if, if it keeps getting scraped, it's going to fall apart eventually. And if even if people touch it, it's not going to feel like stone. So you get that uh, superior fire resistance, like I was talking about, and again, painting optional. All right. So I got a question here, but I want to show you guys this too. Don't forget to make the point that monster mud can't be outdoors; it won't hold up to the weather. Mm -hmm. Well. If you use exterior paint and then paint over it, it will. It's a lot of work, but it, it will. Yeah. The other thing is... That's my bigger point. You have to like yeah. seal it or yeah. you know, make it more weather, weather resistant. Well, the other thing is that um, 
Yeah. It, it makes the walls really heavy. So if you get a mobile haunt, those things weigh a ton. If you got foam, but that's going to su survive the trip, the foam's going to get. So, you know, give and take. All right, what I wanted to show you here, I want to put a little bit of paint. My put a little bit of paint in here. That's too much. <laughs> Stay two foot back from the monitor. Okay. This is a, they call it a shoe brush. It's used for cleaning, but they call it a shoe brush. What I'm doing here is I'm mixing up a little bit of paint and some water. I'm trying to get it running. The reason I'm doing that is if you're doing a whole wall of granite or something, it's a good method for getting, uh, if you look at granite, you'll, get, you'll, you'll see a lot of different dots, a lot of different colors. Ooh, I just got my glasses <laughs> 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 Bad. I just had street cred for a while. Yeah, wait. Lots of dots. Now you do multiple colors. Throw some black in there. I'm not going to get a better stone pattern than that. And that's it. Do you guys got any questions? No, because you know this already. <laughs> Jerks. <laughs> Or a hundred. Again, the real expensive <laughs> route on that is they actually make paint sprayers yes, that they do. has the wide open nozzle that does that. So I don't they do. see and, why. And you can buy. actually get cans. Uh, they, they sell the, the flecking in cans. And it doesn't hold up. It's meant for indoors. So. Looks like stone, I guess. Yeah. Alright, that's it. You have a granite laptop. It's all good. <laughs> now you I mean, drop it and it won't break. I, I think you, you could probably skip demonstrating that, you know, that, that spray technique live. You could just, you know, have your brush and just kind of pretend you're doing it and have the results. No, I could do it live. I, well, I'll save you a little bit of time. Yeah. Because I, I think you... you you really, I think right now you're running long. Well, I wanted to show that to you guys. You notice it wasn't in my. Okay. Wasn't in my. Um, Plus. It wasn't in your laptop. It was on your laptop. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> there well, she go. was sort of setting up all okay. that stage as you went. Yeah, that's another thing. Assuming your thing, you'll yeah. have yeah, your paint trays all set up. Set up. I'll, I'll be prepared. I'll the have good assistant. brushes. The glue yeah. will be open. Right, exactly. Stuff in all stages, like that whole cooking show technique. Where... Exactly. Although there, there's we all... put it in the oven, cook it for 40 minutes, and voila! <laughs> exactly. Well, there's, there's, only, the fi there's only 15 minutes between classes, though, so there's not a lot of you know setup time, unfortunately. Yeah, I gotta I gotta get some sort of bucket or something so I can just as I'm done with the brush, just throw it in there. There's your hour. <laughs> Plenty of time to show all those methods. I mean, there's other stuff too, but I can't fit it all in.
And most of that's a lot of people, I don't know anybody who uses Monster Mug on their wall, so hopefully somebody learned something. I'm going to go, hey, Pam, you want to take this? <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, that's what you got Pam for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>